So one of the important concepts that we briefly introduced in the last module was that language is not only used to say true or false things, but is also used to do things. So in the next few modules, we're going to look deeper into this concept and what it means. Um, so first, let's take a few examples. Now think about what there is in common between sentences like these. So things like, I name this ship the Rosinante, or I pronounce you married, or like, I dare you to climb over that fence. One of the interesting things about these sentences is that just saying them makes them true, right? So if I say, I dare you to climb over the fence, then I have dared you to climb over the fence, right? Um, or if I say, I name this ship the Rosinante, then now the name of the ship is the Rosinante. Right? So these are kind of utterances that make themselves true. Right? So these are all examples of how we can use language to do things rather than just saying things. Um, and these are a special kind of utterance that um, in the past were once called performatives or performative utterances. Right? So these are utterances that we use to perform some kind of action and do something. So back when people started thinking about this kind of utterance, they have the idea that we can divide all language into two different types of utterance. Number one, we have constatives, which are language that we use to say something. These are the, the kind of typical language that you see in syntax class and stuff like that. So the cat is on the mat. Um, that is uh, an utterance that just tells you some information. It says something. And then on the other hand, we have the performatives, which are language that does something. Right. Um, so this is the fundamental idea behind performatives, that we can divide utterances into these two kinds, and every utterance is either constative or performative. Keep this idea in mind, because over the next few modules, we're going to think about whether or not it really makes sense. Um, one of the important things about performatives is that um, they work a little bit differently than constatives, right? So constatives, remember, are utterances that say something or spread some message. So constatives can be true or they can be false, right? So if I say there's a cat on the mat, um, that's true if there really is a cat on the mat, and it's false if there's not a cat on the mat. Um, but performatives don't really work that way. Um, the most we can say is like, they're always true because when I say a performative, I make it true. Um, but they're not really true or false in an informative sense. Um, so what happens with performatives is instead of being true or false, they work or they don't work, right? So um, a performative can do the thing that it's meant to do, or it cannot do the thing that it's meant to do. Um, so to give you some examples, for example, if, if I go up to a ship and I, I smash a bottle of champagne on it and I say, I hereby name this ship the Rosinante. But if I am not the person who has the authority to name ships, then that performative doesn't work. I can't, if I'm just a random person, I can't change the name of a ship. Um, if I say, I pronounce you two married, but those two people are already married and they don't have the legal right to get married to each other, then my performative doesn't work, right? Or if I wanna get married, um, so you know, I had to go through this. When I got married, I had to, uh, I had to go to the, the government office and had to sign some documents and say some things and say, uh, I agree that I, I am not married anywhere else and I will do this and I will do that. Um, and then eventually I said, I do, and we were married. Um, if I did that entire process while I was wearing a t-shirt that said, I do not mean what I am saying right now, do you think the performative would work? Um, I haven't tried it myself, but I suspect that maybe it wouldn't work and I wouldn't get married after I said that. Um, so that's the idea that performatives are not necessarily true or false, but they work or they don't work. Uh, and in pragmatics lingo, we say that um, a performative that works, we call it felicitous and a performance performative that does not work, we call infelicitous, right? So keep in mind, this is sort of the fundamental idea behind performatives is that um, 
this theory, at least this old theory said that we can divide all kinds of language into two groups. There's constatives, which are true or false, and there's performatives, which are felicitous or infelicitous. So over the next couple of modules, we're going to look at some more detail about, uh, we're going to look at this idea in some more detail and think about whether or not it really holds up.